Okay, so we have sanded the sheet. Look at that, nice and shiny. Not matter, be pointless going for a matter finish. Okay, so we are in the new workshop today, and you know what that means? It means we are cutting the titanium mount for the jet engine. This is the jet engine right here. Sorry for the background noise. I thought being Saturday next door wouldn't be working. They're working. Who works on Saturday? Apart from me. I was looking at the jet engine, and I was looking at these holes here. You see those holes right there, the two, two open holes? I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, they don't look like three mil holes, they look like four mil holes. And I measure them, and they're four mil holes. So I'm gonna to have to change the drawing a little bit before we start cutting, but that'll only take a couple of minutes. Other than that, we're good to start cutting this engine mount on the water jet cutter. Okay, so I have changed the holes on the drawing. The mount is ready to be cut. We are just gonna do two things. We're gonna, we're gonna change the surface finish of the sheet. The sheet is over here. Take a look at that. It's got a very matte finish to it. That's not like, it looks okay, but you know, why not make it look a bit nicer? So we're gonna give it a bit of a, a shinier finish. Once we've done that, once we've sanded that, we're basically gonna put it into the water jet cutter here on a little frame, then there, and then cut it. It should only take, in fact, I'll do it for you right now. I'll show you this. So I can see from there it's going to take 5.6 minutes, so basically five and a half minutes to cut this sand stuff. Can you see that? It's going to use, so it's going to use three and a half pounds, one and a half kilos roughly of that stuff to cut the part. So pretty quick, five minutes to, uh, to do that. Actually, it's quite amazing what a water jet cutter can do. I mean, like, if I wanted to cut that part any other way, like, how, how would you do it? With, like, a hacksaw and a file? Just out of interest, I've never, ever, ever taken this water jet cutter for granted. We've had it a year and a half. We've done, I don't know, 700 hours cutting with it. N not for a minute have I taken it for granted. It's just, it still blows my mind what it can do. So what you saw there was a dry run. So basically that's the movement the water jet cutter is gonna make. We've cleaned the tank and so we've never had such a clean tank since we installed the machine one and a half years ago. So you might be able to see something, but probably not. There's so many bubbles and usually dirt garnet in the tank. So you might see it, you might not, but I thought I'd do a dry run so you can at least see the path that it's gonna be taking. Little bit of a false start there. We saw some garnet dropping out where it shouldn't have been dropping out, but I think it was okay, just a bit random. So we'll, we'll try that again.
Okay, so there we have it. It's bigger than I thought it would be, which is weird, but two things. One, there's a little tag there. I don't know if you can see that. Just there. Now that tag is what holds it in. That stopped it falling out. It's like a little thing. Otherwise the piece would drop to the bottom or into the basket we have for catching it. And the other thing is that all the edges, you know, they're not that smooth. So I'll probably grind them down once we get back to the old workshop because we've got the grinder over there, like a sort of bench grinder. But now I'm just going to check it actually fits because, you know, like, I might have screwed something up, something really obvious. There is a good chance of that. So, there we go. One titanium jet engine mount. That's pretty easy actually. I need to change the titanium screws that I'm using on them. They're kind of temporary, they're not really practical. I also need to get threaded rods so that I can, you know, bolt this to whatever other bit of metal or workbench that I'm gonna put it on for testing. Going to hand grind it at the old workshop, get all the edges nice and smooth, get that little tag off it. And that's it. Right, I've just come home just now and I've been thinking about this. I'm trying to figure out why I'm why have, why have I done this? Like a simple bit of metal or just clamping it onto a workbench, clamping the jet turbine onto the workbench, that would have been fine. Like why do I have to go to these extreme levels of having this titanium mounting plate, which might only be used once or twice? Like, flawed. Just a flawed personality. Like, extremism. Why? I'm just, I'm ranting to myself. I'm trying to figure out why I do these extreme sort of obsessive, compulsive, over-the-top things. I don't know, but it's done anyway. I try not to do it, but... It just happens. Right, I am going to leave you with this. Over the last week or so, I have gone right back on track. I don't know if you know or remember, but I was sort of really demotivated for a, for a month or two there, really trying to get into work, and I couldn't. But this last week, I've really been into it, and I think a big part of that is that I've given more routine to my life, and you know, had things that I had to do specifically every day, and I wouldn't go to sleep until I did those specific tasks. It's boring, it sounds boring, it is boring, but a lot of progress is what I've made in this last week. And I'm gonna leave you with a quote that's very, very related to this. The quote is by W. H. Auden, 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 and he said, routine in an intelligent man is a sign of ambition.